In terms of implementing features, um, additional features beyond just forwarding data, uh, and I mean things like firewalling, security features, uh, application visibility and control, denial of service detection and prevention. Typically, those were done on a controller. In extreme cloud wireless scenario, these are done on the AP. So the access point performs all the major functions of that network. Um, it will perform, obviously, all the control plane mechanisms and application detection, deep packet inspection, um, the layer 2 firewalling, layer 3 to layer 7 firewalling, and layer 2, layer 3 denial of service prevention and detection, it, they will all be done on the AP. The access point implements a forwarding engine, and that forwarding engine is flow-based. Uh, and the benefit of a flow-based forwarding engine is it will take a minimum toll on your CPU while at the same time providing things like uh, layer 7 firewall and providing deep packet inspection capabilities where you're we're able to look into the packets and see, oh, these packets belong to a specific type of application and because those packets belong to a previously established flow, we know uh, which application applies to that flow. And then based on that flow, we can then apply security policies or QoS policies to it. Uh, and that's all done on the AP itself. And it's all done without affecting the local resources too much. Some of the other functions performed by the APs themselves is operating system fingerprinting. So based on things like uh, DHCP exchanges or DHCP uh, messages, things like HTTP exchanges, uh, we're able to determine what kind of operating system is running on a client device. And you can use that information to implement network access control um, in the Extreme Cloud IQ. You can implement QS policy enforcement, like queuing and rate limiting. Um, maybe you want to limit your guest users to a specific data rate, whereas boosting or giving more data rate available to your enterprise um, users. Fast and secure roaming, it's all done on the AP. Voice enterprise functionality uh, required for measurement and fast and secure roaming with 802.11 R, V, and K. It's all implemented on the access point. Multicast handling, multicast to unicast conversion, filtering out multicast traffic, um, pr protecting from broadcast storms. It's all done on the AP. And the AP can actually act as a radio server it can talk to an Active Directory directly and authenticate users as a Radius proxy server um, and can also cache credentials. Uh, there's a use case where you can actually use the local database on the AP uh, and use that AP as the authentication server. So it's very, very flexible in terms of use cases you can support that way. So how is all this done? Well, the central piece of the cooperative control protocols and the distributed architecture is a protocol called Advanced Mobility Routing Protocol. And what that protocol does, it, it, synchronize, it synchronizes client information between different access points. Uh, and the package of that information is called Client Roaming Cache. The Client Roaming Cache will include things like firewall session state, it will include application session state. Then it will include QoS session state. So when a client roams from one AP to the other, all those counters, all that session information is going to be there and it's just going to continue. It will include information that have to do with the client itself and any sort of network access control type of information like uh, user profile that's being used, operating system being used, uh, where, did the, the, where did the IP address came from, where does the DNS reside, um, what kind of VLAN is assigned to this client device. And then for the authentication, it will cache the PMK or the pairwise master key from the radio server or if it was generated locally uh, from the local AP. Session time, captive web portal status information. So uh, the captive web portal state information allows you to implement a seamless captive web portal authentication, for example, for your uh, guest users. You come into the office, you go into conference room one on the third floor, you authenticate for the Captive Web Portal, you close on your laptop, one hour later you log in in the second floor and you can bypass that portal because the AP downstairs already knows you. 
because the AMRP was used to share that information with the AP uh, downstairs. Uh, voice enterprise state information and for some of the MDM integration, it will also uh, store the MDM state in terms of whether that device is uh, okay, whether the network access control allows that device to be on handle other network or does it need to be uh, redirected maybe to a quarantine or to an isolation VLAN. So all of that is shared within the client roaming cache and the AMRP, Advanced Mobility Routing Protocol, is the protocol that's used to exchange that information between the access points. 